talk to you guys a little bit about JavaScript magic. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of JavaScript programmers have little to no understanding of what's going on when they're executing their code, what's going on under the hood, that is. Um, and, uh, and when things behave sort of unpredictably, they kind of just chalk it up to JavaScript magic. So let's look at a few examples real quick. Um, I apologize if any of these are a little too low level, but bear with me. Um, so people know that you know, when a uh, variable is declared, it's going to be um, uh, initialized to undefined. So some people might expect that on line two here, um, David Blaine, I can levitate, is going to be overwritten by undefined. So let's run it. But I can levitate persists. So if that last one threw you for a loop, you might be thinking on this one that this time console.log pigeon will actually, um, uh, will actually run um, coo. Let's take a look. So to get a better idea of what's going on here, uh, we need to um, uh, demystify some of this behavior. So I present JavaScript's biggest secrets finally revealed a look behind the curtain at the JavaScript engine. Um, so to start off, we kind of need to start more general, and we're going to talk about program language in implementation, which is generally just a system for executing computer programs. Um, this is a pretty complicated topic, and it can involve a ton of minute steps, but for the scope of this presentation, we're just going to um, limit ourselves to uh, the description that, you know, programming language implementation is basically what's happening between your source code and when it's being run by a machine. Um, there are two general approaches to implementation. There's compilation and there's interpretation. Interpretation, it's a program that goes statement by statement through your source code and executes the corresponding code directly on the target machine. So if you imagine that you're in France but you don't speak French and you're lost. So you go up to a local, ask for directions, but he doesn't speak English. What do you do? If you were to use Google Translate, that would be most similar to using like an interpreter. Um, the nice thing about Google Translate it would provide you with a fast, convenient solution, but it would come at the cost of quality. Um, although you and the other person could probably make out what the translation is, there would definitely be a more accurate way to translate it. The other way, oops, sorry, two examples of codes that use uh, uh, interpretation are Ruby and Python. Um, the other way is compilation, and a compiler is a program that reads your source code, translates it into machine code, and then returns the translation without running it. Um, so in the same example, say you and this guy uh, hit it off, you keep in touch, you correspond through emails, but of course he sends you the emails in French. You don't speak French. This time, rather than using Google Translate, you send it to your friend who speaks French. They translate it for you. The translation is way better. Um, which, you know, comp compilation uh, optimizes performance. But now you have this extra step of, you know, sending it off before, uh, sending it off to get translated before it's actually, um, you know, being sent to your friend. Uh, that being said, uh, which one is JavaScript? Um, although it's usually categorized as interpreted, um, it's technically compiled. But it's a type of compilation that's as close to interpretation as you can get. It's called just-in-time. And just-in-time is a type of comp uh, compiler that compiles your source code during execution. So unlike other languages that implement compilers, JavaScript's compilation happens, uh, um, I'm sorry, does not happen in a separate build step beforehand. Um, so since the compiler is a component of the engine, your source code will actually be read by the engine twice, once during compilation and once again uh, during execution. So what does the compiler do? Uh, for one thing, it takes care of uh, uh, declaring variables and functions. Although we see var a equals 2 as one statement, your engine's actually going to see it as declaration, uh, which is going to be handled by the compiler, and assignment, which it will take care of. So this separation of declaration and assignment is uh, where the concept of hoisting comes in. So going back to the earlier example, uh, the, uh, the compiler would encounter um, uh, David Blaine, I can, uh, I'm sorry, var David Blaine, it would hoist that to the top, and then, um, but the assignment would stay in place. So, uh, so the question is, you know, where are all these values, um, where are all these variables and assignments being stored? 
They're being stored in the execution context object. Um, so this is kind of a chunky phrase. So to like kind of put it in perspective, when we're talking about um, the execution, we're talking about the execution of a, of a function. And um, when we're talking about context, it's the same way you could think of like an, ath an athlete in like the context of jumping or running. Here we're talking about uh, uh, a function in the context of executing. So what does the context object do? It keeps track of all the variables and functions which the um, function uh, needs in order to run. And if this sounds familiar, uh, it should, because when someone says something like uh, that something's in scope, what they're really referring to is the execution context object. And uh, just like scope is defined by functions, the execution context object is created when functions are invoked. So let's talk a little bit more about what the compiler does. It has uh, three main jobs. It declares and initializes functions, or function arguments, pardon me. Uh, it declares and initializes functions. And it declares local variables and any anonymous functions assigned to the local variable, but without initializing them. So since that last statement is kind of a mouthful, let's take a second to look at an example. Um, when, the, uh, when the compiler encounters a statement like the one here, it will declare two attributes on the uh, ex execution context object. Magic, which it will set to undefined, and um, and uh, the function, which will be um, have a uh, key of anonymous still. All that being said, let's see the execution context object in action. So, um, when the um, compiler encounters uh, outer, it will um, create a new execution context object. Uh, the arguments passed to the um, to the function one will be assigned. Um, local variables are declared, but not assigned. Uh, functions are declared and assigned, but not executed. And that will do it for the compiler. Now the engine is all set for execution. So local variables are assigned. And then when the engine reaches the inner function, it's actually going to create a new execution context object nested within this one. So knowing all this, the behavior of the second example will become a little bit more apparent. So during the, um, so uh, sorry, let's start where the, uh, the engine has invoked a uh, magic cage at the bottom. Um, it will have created a new execution context object. Um, so um, the compiler will hoist the um, declaration of, oops, uh, declaration of pigeon to the top of the scope. It will add it to the execution context object. Um, and finally, oops, oh, and then uh, it will also assign the, um, the console function. So all that's left for uh, function to do, or rather, I'm sorry, all that's left for the uh, engine to execute uh, is the um, call to console.logPigeon. And since pigeon's already declared on the local execution context object, um, it doesn't need to look outside where it would find Q. So that's why undefined is um, uh, logged. So what to take away from all this? Uh, JavaScript, JavaScript is compiled immediately before it's executed. Uh, the compiler will declare all functions and variables. Um, um, the compiler will uh, hoist all function and uh, variable declarations. Um, the compiler will um, uh, initialize all arguments um, for a function and the function itself. And finally, uh, variable assignments will stay in place where they are. So um, if you're interested in, in reading anything more about this, uh, these are some um, excellent uh, resources. Um, thank you so much for your time.